afternoon, good evening, students. I hope you're doing good. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're back with another lecture concerning linguistics for first year students. As you can see, it will be about um, structuralism or European structuralism because we have American structuralism that we are going to see in the upcoming lectures, of course. But the concern of today or today's concern is European structuralism. Anyways, before I start, as usual, I invite you to like the Facebook page of this channel in order to be notified whenever I post something new and also subscribe to the channel if it's not already done. I invite you to do it. Um, that would encourage me to do more and also help you out during the period of exams. Before I start with what is European structuralism, we shall start with giving the timeline or the emergence of this school because um, European structuralism is a school of thought. It has a period, a timeline. When did it emerge? Uh, and it was around the 1920s, and the American one was around the 1950s. Before I start with what is um, European structuralism or structuralism in general, we are going to talk about the father or the founder of modern linguistics. It is um, Ferdinand de Saussure. He was born in 1857 and died in 1913. Um, he is the father and the founder of modern linguistics, as I said. Um, his work, Cours de Linguistique Générale, is revolutionary. He was not satisfied with comparative grammar. He stated that such comparison only answered where a language comes from, but not what language is. So the aim of Ferdinand de Saussure is to answer to the question what language is? What do we mean by language? Because he, uh, let's say, criticized comparative grammar and he said that such comparison only answered where a language comes from. So this is a background about linguistics. How did it emerge? Because he is the one who, let's say, um, created linguistics as we know it today. Uh, of course, it was improved, improved and all, but he's the father or the founder of linguistics. Anyways, um, structuralism is a school of thought that refers to a set of principles of language study. This is very important. It started in Europe. I said in around uh, 1920s. It can be uh, a little bit before or maybe after, but some say that it's uh, in 1916. And of course, the word structuralism can be found in different disciplines. So, the way we are going to study about structuralism in linguistics does not mean the same thing if someone, for example, is going to study it in a different field. So, structuralism for us is a school of thought that refers to a set of principles of language study. Okay? Now we talk about uh, these principles. What do we mean by principles of structuralism so basically they look almost alike like the principles of linguistics as a scientific discipline because they are interrelated and to start with it is descriptive a descriptive study of language in structuralism or in this school of thought language is described okay it's a, st it's a descriptive study of language the second principle we can talk about is the fact that each language has its own structure. This is the same as the principles of um, linguistics as a scientific uh, discipline. Uh, the equivalent is objectivity. The third principle that we can mention is language is a system. Okay, Before, the system was studied in an atomistic system. It means each unit is studied alone. But for the modern system is called the relational system, which means to study the difference um, or the different relationship that we have between linguistic units. You are going to see this uh, later. Uh, the, the fourth, the fourth di principle is according to Saussure or uh, Ferdinand de Saussure, every language can be studied as a relational system or structure. So, according to Saussure, a language 
any given language can be studied or treated as a relational system which means to study because language is a system of communication right and it's a, it has a structure as well according to Saussure to study a language we need to or we can be or we can sorry we can study this language or any given language in a relational system it means to study the relationships that we find uh, within the system and of course these units or units of language are defined in a relational way so whenever you study them then you, you have to define them and in order to define them you have to define them in a relational way I do repeat some words so that you you won't be confused or lost so we we shall keep it or we shall stay on the same track anyways another principle is the fact that each unit exists because of its difference from the other unit so if you study like the traditional system um, you study language using the traditional system you are going to find different units and you are going to study each unit alone you won't exactly uh, let's say define them the correct way okay but if you define them according to their differences if you have for example in on in the same system you have like six units you are going to pick the first the second until the sixth then you are going to see the difference between them and this is what makes them exist it's because they are different and of course structural linguistics study the relation or the relations between units this is what I uh, I said and each linguistic unit has a value within the system so in order not to neglect some of the linguistic units every unit within a system has its own value so even the tiniest or the smallest unit has its own value within the, the system and of course this value is determined by its difference from the others so we have let's say um, a unit here on a hand and on the other hand we have another unit although the, the first unit is smaller maybe but still it has a specific kind of value it plays a role within that system and this value is determined because of its difference with the value of the other unit anyways of course language also can be defined as a structured system of relation oppositions so like I said um, these um, this uh, structured system can be defined in order to understand it we have to study the uh, let's say the um, the difference between the units inside this is what we call the relation oppositions anyways that would be it for today's lecture about the European structuralism next time we are going to deal with Saussure's dichotomies it will be a little bit complicated then we will have one lecture remaining concerning linguistics for first uh, year students if you have any kind of question feel free to ask them in the comments below I'll be happy glad to answer your questions of course uh, otherwise you can message me on the Facebook page of this channel you're going to find the link in on the description below otherwise I tell you see you in the next video peace